Talk Radio for the Masses. Headline of this news, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio for the Masses. How you doing? Today's Thursday, March 26, 2020. Eighty-six days into the new year, just two hundred and eighty days left. We're in a leap year. Don't forget that. Six days off. We are live from a bunker. Somewhere in the middle of beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world. And all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? Yeah, I know. I know. You're doing okay. Let's not freak out just yet. But tonight, I know you've been waiting for this. And we're going to do it at the bottom of the hour. Tonight, very special guest joining me tonight to help me man the phones, Chris Bledsoe. Chris Bledsoe is here. He's going to take your phone calls, answer your questions. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, Chris Bledsoe. Chris, good evening, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, Jim. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having uh, having you back, actually. And uh, this is our third show in like three weeks, and that's that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. And uh, and this is uh, this is one of the things that I do want to uh, talk about really quick, and that is obviously. Uh, the coronavirus and and what is going on out there uh, in your neck of the woods and how you're uh, getting along and how your family is doing. Is everything okay? Well, um, in our county, there's not that many reported cases, I think, four to six. So they're not quite as stringent here as they are in other places, but we're on a 15-day lockdown. But you wouldn't know it if you, if you looked at the highway. But... Um, all the kids are home. Emily came home from New York over a week and a half ago, which I was worried bad about her. You know, young college girl at NYU. Right, right, right. You know, and it just it worked out. She she came home last Wednesday. So, but we're all doing good. I you know I'm a rheumatoid patient. I, I have a severe case of rheumatoid, and I was honestly terrified. I have been of this disease because you know my immune system is not it has been compromised and and uh, what, yeah and, and i think this is very important uh, not only uh for you and specifically your health but this is something that everybody should be aware of if you've got any uh immune situ you know w- with you personally to stay at home Right. And and so for you, your compromise and and your health uh, problems that you are going through right now on a daily basis, you have to absolutely make sure that you're at home, don't you? 
Yeah, I do. And honestly, I took the leap and I, took, I quit taking these meds. I quit taking them about 10 days ago. And the doctor said it was a good thing I did to stay off for three months until it all blows by and then start over. But I'm telling it. I can tell it's hard to button my pants or tie my shoes. But other than that, uh, I feel great. I have more energy than I do taking that uh, all those chemicals, you know. But there's more more problems with my hands and feet. Yeah, there you go. And, well, I'll just say you sound good, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember yeah. uh, Billy Crystal on Saturday Night Live? When uh, he said uh, he uh, he would play a Ricardo Montalban, remember that that character, yeah. and he yeah. he would say, "It's better to look good than to feel good." <laughs> 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 oh, man, I lived by that. Man, I any time I had a cold, I made sure my hair it, it looked really good. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> there you go. Well, um, let's get to it. It's going to be a very very busy night and. Uh, on the phones here, and you'll be able to uh, experience what I do. Last night, uh, we did open lines last night, and I, I don't know how many calls I fielded, but it was probably uh, 50, 60, 70 calls in, in three hours. And and it's a lot of fun to do, but you get to uh, uh, you know communicate with such a wide range of uh, people uh, around the country and around the world and and to hear what their thoughts are. And the other thing is, Chris, is that so many of us, including myself, have experienced things. And those things, whatever they are, right, it's different with everybody, but there's an emotional connection there. There's a personal connection, but it's what brings them into this community and their search for answers. And for them to have the opportunity uh, to interface with you tonight on the air. Uh, for them, it means a lot, and it, it is truly uh, extraordinary. And I want to thank you for that, and it's it's going to be a great night. Are you ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Okay, yeah. let's uh, let's go to the phones. Let's see who's up first. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Up first tonight with Chris Bledsoe. Who's calling? Hey, this is Bob McGuire. Oh, Bob McGuire. <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> Uh, okay, oh, hold, hold on, oh, oh, hold on, Bob. I want everybody to know that uh, this call is not set up. Number one, number two. I didn't know Bob was calling in. Three. I don't have Bob's phone number blocked. I should have it. <laughs> right? So, so uh, this is a surprise for me. And uh, there you go, a surprise for Chris. And uh, there you go, Bob. How you doing, man? How you guys hanging out there in Alabama? It's 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 a mess. So uh, the um, the coronavirus is we've got 400 and something cases and it'll double in about 48 hours and people are dying. The governor closed all state schools today for the remainder of the year. Kids won't go back to school until fall. So it's been rough. Uh, but yeah. you know, it's like we're we're not dealing with anything that everybody else isn't dealing with. Uh, so Jimmy, I I called to. Finish the story of uh, my visit to Chris with news that no one knows until now, if I may. Absolutely. And, uh, well, no, you have to ask uh, Chris's permission. It's his show. Well, oh, you know, no, no. Bob, Chris, Chris. Bob's like hey, one of brother, my best friends, so he can say whatever he <laughs> okay, wants. So <laughs> I, I'm going to tell the rest of the story. So la when I was on, I told about visiting Chris, having some experiences, going home, having the phenomenon follow me home, having strange experiences at home, and that was not the end of the story. In January of 2018, my wife had a stroke, and um, it, was, it was a really tough time emotionally. And she was left with a, a small but permanent disability where she had right side weakness and when she walked she drug her left right heel on the ground so after the experiences that we had when we got home i think you'll probably remember maybe others will remember we got squirted with water in the middle of the air 
coming out of nowhere. Over the next week, her right side weakness completely disappeared. And we went to the neurologist. The neurologist has no explanation and is so surprised that an MRI has been scheduled for next month. So I call it a miracle cure because the doctor says these things are not cured. And I can tell you that disability is gone. And and when you uh, when you called Chris and spoke to him about this, uh, Chris, what was what was your uh, what was your reaction? Well, I was overjoyed, as always. Um, it, it, but I knew, you know, I don't want to sound. Uh, well, let's just say I mentioned to Bob. I knew I didn't know the healing was going to happen, but I knew based on the way it was interacting with the two of us and Ryan, that they had something very special in store for for Bob and myself. And uh, I didn't realize they were going to heal Sharon, but they did. And so I can just be humbled is all. You know, that's all I can do is just be humbled. And this is the reason, Jimmy, over the years, I've maintained that it's spiritual and it's something greater than just a plain old alien from the Pleiades coming here to bother me or Travis with a fishing pole. Right, right, it, right. It's a whole lot more to it. and I'm just thrilled for Sharon. I mean, she's just the perfect school teacher, little mom, and never complains. But she got a blessing that um, I'm just so yeah, happy so, for. So the, 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 only, the only other thing is uh, at, at work, because I work late at night in the in the lab uh, at Virginia Tech before we closed down and sent everybody, including me, home. Uh, I would walk into the parking lot at night, and right off the end of the runway at uh, the Virginia Tech Montgomery County Airport, there would be gigantic uh, orb that would light up the farm across U.S. 460. It would light up acres. And it would it would stay off the end of the runway for 15 or 20 minutes. And that's illegal because it's within a thousand meters of the end of a runway of an airport, which is with an active runway. Sure. So what this is just crazy stuff. And I'm going to tell you, it's been a life changing set of experiences. There is uh, there. I, I'm sure that we're going to take a couple of calls tonight that are going to deal with uh, coronavirus, Chris. And you know, while I've got uh, Bob on the phone because Bob just brought this up, Chris, the the interference and the help that was run with Bob, and you've experienced it too yourself. Um, what about what's going on right now with coronavirus and this planet? Uh, is there something? That can be done about that. Do you know anything about that? I really don't. Um, the only thing I can relate to this virus is that when I made the statement that this the, this thing the lady told me was biblical, well, I guess you could include this virus in that because what she said was that there are people in power using the book of Revelations as a script. Right. To bring about the end of the planet, uh, just to bring about our demise. And so if you read that book, there's a lot of that stuff in there, pestilence and famines and earthquakes. And um, But I'm just repeating what she told me. But as far as the, uh, no, nobody never told me the coronavirus. So how, would, how can we deal with it? We just have to let nature take its course. Maybe it gets to be 100 here in the next month. In uh, North Carolina, it's liable to, and uh, it'll do away with a lot of it. The heat will, I think. Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope. I think our fingers are all crossed there. Hey, Bob, thank you so much, and and uh, keep your family safe. And do me a favor, wash your hands. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, I do, and, and, and I just want to assure you and the audience, 
this was not coordinated with Chris. He had no idea I was going to do this. No, no, But I just no. felt yeah. – I have I felt it was imperative that I do it. And, Jimmy, thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, Bob, you're the very best, man. And give my best to your wife, okay? I will do Thanks. it, Jimmy. Take care. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thanks. Be, be thank safe. Thank you, Bob. Absolutely. Be safe out there, Bob. And uh, before I, I get back to the phone calls – um, I, I I cannot stress enough with everybody, and I know that there's going to be some coronavirus calls. And as I'm bringing calls in, when you hear my voice and then it goes silent, I'm just putting you on hold. That's all that's going on. And uh, I will get to everybody. It's going to be a busy, busy night on the phones, and I need everybody's help here to understand that it's going to go silent. And when it does, like right now, boom, uh, you're just on hold. And, man, we've got a lot of calls here, Chris. And uh, they're just flooding in. So uh, just give me a minute here to get caught up. It's um, And uh, another thing that uh, I wanted to uh, ask you, uh, when you go off of these meds because of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, is it something that you have to wean yourself off of, or are you going cold turkey? I'm supposed to wean myself off of some of it, but I went cold turkey. And I went to see my doctor, and she told me uh, what I did was – she's glad I did. Actually, she said that nowhere in the medical field has there been a flag saying these patients should come off these medications. But she thinks that uh, I did the right thing because one of those pills is uh, called Rinbok, which was a replacement for people that methyltrexate doesn't work for. So it's like a chemo or a – TNF blocker, biologic, immune suppressant. And I went cold turkey. And let me tell you, the, the last night I woke up at 3 in the morning because I rolled over on my hand, and my hand hurt so bad I had to get up, pace the floor. Just that kind of thing. Right. You know, sucks. Well, just, yeah, that's the, that's the right word, Chris. That's the right <laughs> word. But, you know, our thoughts are with you, man. And uh, let's uh, let's get through some of these phone calls. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Deb. Hi, Deb. How are you? Hi, doing good. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Yes, thank you, Deb. I, Deb, I what have, do you have? Um, I have... Yeah. I have one really quick silly question, and then I have my real question. The silly question is, and this is from another fader, not wanted to know what's your favorite pizza. <laughs> oh, my favorite pizza is uh, New York style thin crust uh, pepperoni and mushroom. That's mine. Excellent. That's mine. Yeah, that's mine too. Wow. Except black olives too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what's cool. your what's your real question? My, yeah, Jimmy, my real question is, Chris, with all of these experiences that you've had over the years, how has it changed your perception of what we call God? Uh, it has drastically. Um, I know that's a yeah. big question. <laughs> yeah, it is a big question because when it first happened, you know, I was a fundamentalist um, a deacon in the Pentecostal Holiness Church, and that's a pretty big mm -hmm. statement because they're very strict, and I married a girl, beautiful girl, that still goes to that church, and she's had to conform as I have. She tries to put it out of her mind that it don't exist, even though it shows up in front of her. Um, and I've shared videos with Jimmy where you can see her in there talking. And, but to, to get back to that question, when it first happened, it messed me up so bad, it took me five years to struggle with ever telling this story again because I didn't know what I was dealing with. I thought it, it, I called out in, in need and it came. It, it took away my Crohn's. So I just knew that uh, angels from heaven had come. And then when I told it to the world, then the world got on me and it was all of a sudden demons and everything else. And so... Right. You can imagine mm -hmm. how conflicted I was. And, yes. and then that's why I would never talk about it. And when the lady came in mm -hmm. 2012, it was a hallelujah right. moment. It was like, I got it now. I understand it. And so it brought me back full circle to to uh, my faith in God. Is is He's just, just amazing. 
That's all I can say. It's, it's amazing. We're in a world that is so magical that we can't even fathom it. There you go, Deb. Gee. Thank you. Thank you for the phone call. Absolutely. Take care, Chris. Hope you feel better. Go back, okay, Tappy, Deb. Yeah. <laughs> there you go and thank you for the phone call deb and let's uh let's just keep this rolling and we can uh get a couple more in before the top of the hour hi you uh turn me down in the background turn me down no that's not good enough can't do it Bye bye and always remember have your stuff ready to go here on fade to black all right. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Uh, my name's Ian. Hi, Ian. Hey, what's going on? Uh, am I live right now? You're live, Ian. Say hi to Chris Bledsoe. Oh, okay. What's your question? Hey, what's up, Chris? It's Ian from New York. Hey, Ian. How are you, my friend? Your buddy from Facebook. I actually yeah, just got back from work, and I, I heard that you were on here. So uh, it's just like so out of – I can't believe this just happened. Um, I know you got <laughs> – I only got a certain amount of time. My question is simple. I've been watching uh, some of the other guys, uh, you know, in the UFO world, as you know, Dolan, Grant, all those other ones. And uh, I heard about one particular person talking about the language of angels. Is there anything that you know or you could talk about that particular, I believe it's a book? That I don't think uh, it's about her. I think it's about somebody else. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Um at all and but you know i still struggle with this thing ian is it alien or is it angel and there's a thin line it's there angel. maybe it's both uh but well it was, it was, it, it was uh, um uh, something that was talked on uh, sherman's show and it was called the language of angels i just thought that they were talking more about you if you knew anything about it or whatever but uh, I also wanted to ask, how's your daughter doing? I mean, she was up here in New York. Did she get out here? Or Yes, yeah, she got out last Wednesday and walked through LaGuardia, and there was nobody in the whole airport, and four people on that oh. big 737 coming on. Is she quarantined? No. Uh, well, she is here, but right. she came home. Um, she's been home 10 or 12 days now. Okay. Oh, well, that's great good to hear, news. man, because I'm hearing so many war yeah. stories up here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. All right, Ian, thank you for the phone call, my friend. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I think that is such an important question, though, uh, Chris, and I, I actually want to circle back to it, which is this question uh, that is perplexing everybody. Uh, is it angels? Or is it is it aliens? You've been interfacing with this directly, and that is something that you have to deal with, and you're questioning uh, this on a daily basis. Um, and you just mentioned, I don't want to let this just get away. You said it may be both. What do you mean by that? Well, I think there's probably both out there. Um uh, you know, uh, I study with Dr. Pasolka a lot, or, or I have in the past, and Dr. Zervos and different ones, trying to find answers, you know. And um, I've got a pretty good education in, in, um, in the religious side of it and, and found the connections. There's a lot of connections in the Bible of this. But, you know, there are several different... Uh, groups according to the scripture there's um, there's like nine different orders and some of them are not very nice some of them uh, would be dark and dangerous some of them no no angelic experience has really been a good one it's usually scares the people to death or it's terrifying but um well okay. I, I, I believe it's angelic beings or celestial beings like you know what I get an idea of? The, these these big orange burning ones, they bring the most um, of all the three-letter agencies. They're more interested in these orange glowing balls than they are the other kind. And um, I just have to say that. I can't say any more. But the, 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 the little ones, these little this stuff like Bob experienced here, when I just walked out and I called it, I asked for it to come, and it just starts appearing, and here it comes. And it um, it put on a pretty good show, although I've had it a lot closer. 
but they're like children, Jimmy, and it reminds me of the biblical drawings where you see these little baby angels. They call them cherubs. Well, they don't look like little babies. They look like these little glowing guys with with a triangle on their chest. But right, they're right. that's who I believe. They work for creation, part of the universal. Um, let me see how my friend Tyler told me. He said that, that it represents the universal creation of life. This so triangle. Many, yeah, yeah. So many people emailed me, Chris, say, saying that uh, I didn't get enough information about the triangle and that we we blew past that. So maybe tonight we can actually go back and, and, and talk about it. We need to uh, take a break right here. So let's get our break in. We've got a lot of calls on hold. I'll get to everybody. All right, so you just stay right there tonight. Chris Bledsoe. Taking your phone calls and answering your questions all night long. That call-in number is 747-228-2051. I've got about 20, 30 questions lined up in Twitter. I've got a bunch that have come in in email. I've got 25 calls on hold. Okay? It's going to be a busy night. I'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Chris Bledsoe, taking your phone calls, answering your questions all night long. Let's get straight back to it. Man, we've got a lot of calls on hold. And, uh, Chris, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do it. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy and Chris. My name's Jen, and uh, I want to thank you for being here in these times right now it's nice to hear your comforting voices i listen to you both quite a bit right on jen Um, what's your question for chris so um i once heard you talking to jimmy about um people having experiences after experiencing grief and that happened to me too i'm wondering if you think now um with everything that's going on uh maybe more people will have more experiences since there's so much tragedy in the world, unfortunately. Um, do, you, do you think that more people will come to light now? Great I question. absolutely do. A hundred percent sure do. And the more, the more we become aware of this, the more it becomes aware of us. It's like with Dr. McGuire. Um, when he came here, I knew, I knew by the way it was acting that, um, because when Bob came, he came with a a proposal, right? To do some work together. And I actually went out and prayed and asked, should I do this? And anyhow, it answered. And I knew when he left my house, I told him, I said, it's fixing to start with you. It's not going to it's not going to go away tonight. This is not your last time. It's going to get intense for you when you get home. And sure enough, it did. And and the reason I say that is because of experience. So that would be an answer somewhat to your question. The more you experience this and the more grief and the more fear, the more this thing comes near to us. Thank you for the phone call, Jen, and thank you for the question and be safe out there. Thank you, too. Yeah, thank you. That's, that was, you see, that's what I really love about this audience, Chris. I'm serious. They listen, they're smart, and they're here for answers. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, this is Curtis from Toronto. Hey, Curtis from Toronto. What do you have for uh, Chris Bledsoe tonight? Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Uh, Chris, uh, just first and foremost, thank you for uh, sharing your experiences with us Um Really appreciate it. Um, so my, my question, though, is around uh, the CE5 uh, protocol. So, you know, we have, of course, uh, Dr. Stephen Greer coming out with his documentary uh, about the protocols, encouraging people to get into groups and to, you know, do this with their friends. Uh, but then you have TTSA, and I know uh, Tom DeLong has uh, said before as well that he actually advises against this uh, for 
various reasons, but I was just curious what uh, your, your opinion is on if this is something that people should do, you know, get in groups, give off, you know, the, the positive vibes um, or, or not. Thank you, Curtis. Chris? Uh, well, yeah, a hundred percent believe, um, uh, like, like the Bible says, seek and you shall find, uh, knock and the door shall be opened. I, I, I don't really go out looking for this stuff. In fact, I probably haven't went out, been out in, the, in more than two weeks to stare at the sky. I just don't do it like that. Only when people come, do I go. Um, but. I, I'm not so sure that there's a protocol like summoning a dog or, or, or a spirit or something. It don't work that way for me. It's more, it's just something different. Uh, if to say the word, you know, summon is a is a bad word. Um, when I hear the CE5 protocol, I'm not fa very familiar with it. I don't really know what it means. Is it meditation? Is everybody joining hands? Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm just imagining, but it's a little Chris and, and, and Curtis, thank you for the phone call, man. Uh, that was a great question. Thank you so much. Be yeah, safe out there. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. you thanks. And, uh, but what, uh, Curtis is the CE five. Yes. You, you brought up the key word there, which is meditation. Uh, so there's there's that part of it. There's the calming uh, environment that the CE five uh, group is 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 doing. It's a very calming effect, and and then they 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 ask for contact, and so that that's that part of it. But and you're okay with that. My yeah. version of it, my version of it, is uh, laughter. Let's have some fun. Maybe eat some good food and go out with everybody and 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 be in a positive mindset. And it that tends to work for us. And and we don't go through meditation. We don't do any of that. We don't do a kumbaya. We're not holding hands uh, or or anything. I've had people come up to me, Chris, going, "Hey, man, you're too loud. You need to back down. We're we're trying to be quiet right now and meditate." I'm like, man. It, that's not how I do it, <laughs> and, right. and it seems to work for us. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? You're live. Three, two. Oh, I hate here. to. Yes. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hello? Yes, yes. Who's calling? Yes, sir. This is Graham. Um, how you doing, Chris Bledsoe? Hey, Graham. How are you? I'm good, sir. I uh, just had a glad to get through here. Thank you for both of what you both of what you do, guys. Um, just wanted to ask. Um, I've had some experiences myself throughout my life um, in a very bad spot in my life, and um, I have a hard time with people believing um, in what I'm saying, even though I'm experiencing it. And um, just curious on what your uh, thoughts are on that. If there's any advice you could give on somebody that's experiencing this. And then um, uh, I've even been fired from a job for talking about it. So, so just being shunned in general because of it. And also, if you've given any of, of the thought to the original text of the Bible, uh, and then uh, original Sumerian uh, of things saying basically that um, that Elohim is God and then Yahweh is Jesus. But on the other other effect is Elohim means the great and powerful one. So, what if it's when people are praying, praying and I'm, I'm trying, not trying to be non-religious or sacrilegious because I'm a believer in Yahweh, Jesus, but what is your thoughts on um, any, any of the original, have you studied any of the original text of the Bible and um, what God might be perceiving as some people thinking as the it's the great and powerful, powerful ones is what that translates to. So yeah. what are your thoughts on any of that? Yeah, thank you for that, Graham. Uh, going back, uh, Chris, his first question was, uh, you know, how does he deal with being shunned when he tries to talk about his personal experiences with others? Well, that that's something that is very hard. Um, just call me or call Jimmy or call a friend, and and, you know, if that happens to you, walk away. And call your friends that that'll listen to you. You need people that'll listen to you. And um, 
that, that can help you understand what's happening. But if you're having these experiences, tell me a small example of an experience that you've had. Well, the most powerful one was I'm from a Texas boy, and I, uh, of all things, went to New York to be with a woman. Long story short, I caught her cheating on me. I didn't know anybody in New York. And I was very homeless in a very bad, bad spot in my life to where I was actually suicidal. And I was uh, I walked across the street to a cemetery and was there for days just praying. And um, I, looking back on it, thinking of the cemetery, it's kind of crazy. But what happened was I was actually there. I went there, too, to meet with, we met up with some friends to do CE5 protocols, which one of the callers talked about earlier. I didn't have an experience then, but um, long story short, I was in the middle of New York City, not knowing nobody, no family, no friends, um, in a very bad spot in my life. And I, as I was praying, and this is a very famous cemetery across from a, a film production uh, studio, believe it or not, um, this orb, as I'm praying, this orb comes down, and it's just a bright orb. It first looked like a star, and it came out and it moved across the top of a uh, uh, some buildings, and I knew it was closer, and I felt the this, this spirit, the same spirit I felt, because I grew up a Christian, and I grew up Church of Christ, but I, I and eventually went into non-denominational, and I, I felt the spirit of, of the Holy Spirit around me, and it was the same kind of feeling, and this orb came down, and I didn't hear it. It was more like the Spirit of God talking to me. That's the only <clears throat> thing I could relate it to, though, only because... That's the only thing I've experienced anywhere close to this. And this orb came down and was telling me it's going to be okay. Not even 15 minutes later, one of the care workers at the cemetery came walking through. I was like, did you see that orb looking thing that came down? He was like, I thought I saw a bright light over here, but I came over here because I felt like I needed to. He ended up telling me of a place I could go to get on my feet, work for a few weeks and get the bus ticket back to Texas. And so that was the most amazing experience I've ever been through in my entire life. And uh, I'm just humbled even thinking about it right now. Yeah, that's a a great experience. And, uh, okay, so so Chris, you know, Graham, you know, going out and talking about this experience with people that he knows, I can understand people looking at him, uh, you know, uh, okay. But that's exactly what you've been going through, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I'm so thankful to hear your um, your story. It was perfect. It's just like a, a thousand people that's written me in the last year or two, all wanting to tell their story without being public. And it always starts out just like what you just told me. You were down on the bottom of your luck, and look, a blessing came. A light in this guy came. And and lit a fire up under you, and here you are talking with Jimmy and I today about this. That's was, exactly that's yeah. exactly that's exactly the point. Hey Graham, you've always got a family here, man, and, and you know that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, man, and thank, and be safe. Thank out you, there. brother. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that uh, you're you're right, Chris. That's a very inspirational uh, uh, story, and to hear his uh, emotion, right, talking about it. I mean, when you're down and and you're down so far that you are in a cemetery praying and something like that happens and somebody walks up and everything else that happens, uh, think about that. I want to get over to, before I get back to the calls, um, I've got a, a bunch of questions uh, that have been sent in, and I want to get to the first one. This is from Brian, and Brian says he want, he didn't, it doesn't say specifically here. But he says, I want to know more about Chris's dog and the incident. And I know that we've talked about it a couple of times here on the show. Um, is there anything else that uh, you can you can uh, speak about uh, what happened that particular evening? Yeah, uh, all, what I'd like to say about that is um, it- the only reason I brought that up, well, Grant tells it a lot because Grant was there and he experienced it and saw it, and the other there were other people there too. But I never really talk about it. Um, but I felt I needed to because when I put it out there, when Grant put it out, and I did on uh, Richard Dolan's show, everybody automatically went to the, the default mode. 
see a demon attack your dog and tried to kill it right in front of you. Right. right? That's right. the first thing I get, right? Sure. Well, I, I beg to differ because what happened was, this is how this thing works. Something supernatural happened to my dog right in front of Grant and I. It's gashed her neck open where she was shooting blood out of her neck. Every time her heart would pump, blood would squirt out. And I had my hand on her neck and crying out for help. And when I picked my hand up, the hole just disappeared. Grant witnessed it. And so what it did, Jimmy, is it was a a friend of mine from the the space industry came up and, and when he heard about it. And he automatically said, you have a talent. You have a talent you need to use. And so there set the the rest of my, since that point uh, in around 2012, uh, I've been, or 2013 maybe is when the dog thing happened. I set my whole, um, my, my direction towards servicing others, helping others if they're in need, if they're sick, whether I can do anything or not. All I can do is ask these entities to help. And it seems like they like to certain people they help doesn't work everywhere. But that was my whole thing about the dog. I believe it was a it was something to show me where I needed to be, what I needed to be doing. And um, that was given to me by my friend from NASA, one of them. I have a question from the author, Casper Parks. Yes, Casper has sent in a question. And his question is, are you related to a Captain Bledsoe who served in the United States Navy in the 1970s? I probably am. I wouldn't be close, Ken. But where was he from? Is he from North Carolina, do you know? That's all I have got. That's, That's it. Pretty much all the Bledsoe's are kin. I'm on a Facebook page with, there's about 900 of us, I guess, from all across the country. And we all came in at the same time in the same original family, believe it or not. So Drew Bledsoe and you are are, are related? Yes. We all <laughs> really? are. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, same thing with the churches. You know, a church. Uh, if, if somebody out there is running around with the last name church, uh, you can bet your bottom dollar that, that we're about a degree or two uh, uh, separated. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, how you doing, Jimmy? This is David Walker from Georgia and Florida both, but I'm here in Georgia right now. How are you? How are you doing, Chris? Good, brother. How are you? Doing great, my man. Hey, I was wondering. Oh, shout out to Riverside Coffee. Oh my God, that is the best. Yeah, River Moon. I love it. Thank yeah, you. River Moon Coffee. Yeah, absolutely. Thank River you, Moon. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay, David. Hey, um, I, for some reason, like real quick, like up in the sky yesterday, I've been seeing these bright flashes. Like uh, I think they're called like gamma ray or pulsar bursts. Or so it's very strange. I don't know if anybody else probably recognize that, but it happened twice. It was weird. Yeah, okay. Well, somebody's going to say something on Twitter. <laughs> you saw that in Georgia? Yes, sir. Absolutely. In Lakeland, Georgia. And it, it was wild because it looked literally, I was just looking up the sky and smoking this thing, and I'm like, look up, and I see this like star that got really bright, like a light switch being turned on and off. I love and it. it was so... Man, I love it when that happens, man. Okay, David, what's yeah. your question for Chris? Yes, sir. The question is, um, I wanted to see what your, um, like, cause I, I have a feeling that, that there's a, could be a paranormal, like ghost, like shadow people linked to, you know, maybe this alien and abduction stuff. Like I've thought of that before. And I wanted to know what your scariest, um, incident you've ever had with anything paranormal type. What's the, well, um, oh, yeah, your scariest, you know, everybody loves a good scary <laughs> story, Chris. What, what's your, yes. what's your scariest moment? Lord, that would be a tough one to, uh, decide. Uh, um, the scariest, uh, it'd be hard to say when I walked up the hill in, in the afternoon and these big balls of fire were sitting up at the top of the hill, that was scary but what really was scary was this past easter not this year but easter of 2019 
every year Easter something happens. It does every year. I mean, and I suspect something big this Easter too. Well, at Easter of 2019, I walk outside about 7:30 at night, and when I did, an orb about the size of a firefly appeared up above the trees and on the far side of the pond, quarter mile away. And then it grew and started flashing and pulsating, and it grew up to about the size of a beach ball. And here it come, and it's coming to me. Uh, Way up high, it gets to the pond's edge on the far side, you know, the other side of the lake from me. It comes straight down, spiraling through the tops of the trees. When it got to the edge of the water, it was jumping up and down. Now this orb is about big as a beach ball, and it's going up and down 10 feet high turn them from red to white to yellow. And that got me my blood pumping because I knew it was coming for me. I knew it when I first saw it. It got excited. It's like when I opened the door, it was excited. It saw me come out the door and here it comes. So it comes across the pond and stops 25 feet from me. And it's putting on this big giant light show. And I could see a full blown translucent entity over my pond. And I pulled my cell phone out. And when I went to record, I thought I was recording for a minute, but I wasn't. But when I hit record, the light show dimmed down to just an orb that would come on over the pond. Now it's 25 feet away out in the middle of the water. The orb would come on at its feet. It would move up and come on at its waist and then up at its head. And it did that for 18 more minutes. I filmed it for 18 minutes doing that. That was probably as as, uh, frightening a thing. It's not like something surprised you, boom, you walk around the corner and you see a face and or, you know, something that's startling. This, I had time to see it coming. Here it comes. It's coming to see me, talk to me or whatever it's going to do. But it, that's the reason I'm talking today, Jimmy. I was, you know, I've been in hiding for eight, nine years, not talking, just working behind the scenes with some pretty important people. But last Easter, when this thing came out of the sky, it said, now it's chapter two. You've got to get out and tell your story. And you got to do it now. So that's immediately Absolutely. I want to talk. Yeah, in. there you go, David. Now, uh, the day after the day after Easter, I'm calling Chris. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> hey, David, go Beckley Tepe, man. Be safe out there. Great yes, question. Sir. Thank you so much. You guys have a great night. Yeah, you too. That's, yeah. that's a great question. And uh, before uh, we head to the break and uh, get back to the calls, uh, I'm going to alternate back and forth here. Um, and this was sent in from Marco. Marco wants to know what is going on with your project with Dr. Pasolka? Uh-huh. Everybody exactly. wants to know, you know, everybody wants to know. <laughs> well, um, I wish I could talk about that. Um, I'm under strict orders not to say a word about it. Um, but it's been a seven year or almost eight year work in progress. And I can tell you, I, I had no clue it would take this long. I'm thinking a year when it first came and now we're into seven, almost eight years. And, they always say the bigger the bigger deals take that long. Well, is it and, you know, you see when you when you when you say it like that when you're being all elusive and I get it, I totally get it. But you know, people are thinking, "Hey, may, are, are they are they bringing them into the CIA? Is that what's no. taking so long? Is this something to do with the government agency? Is this the Pentagon?" Are they taking advantage of Chris and and are they bringing him in slowly? Are they reading him in or is it something else? It is a, you know, a giant book deal or are you uh, uh, I can go on and on. You know, are you um, a patient of Dr. Pasuka? Is, is she doing something uh, on the education side? It could be any of those, but we don't know. I can give you a little idea. Uh, imagine um, Dr. Pasolka lives an hour and a half from me in Wilmington, right? which is where my where Ryan, my youngest boy, stays. And, um, of course, I've had another child to go to school there. But she was investigating um, UFOs because she 
comparison between the um, UFO and the biblical stories. And I was her closest um, specimen, I guess. She calls MUFON, and they say, there's a guy right down the street. So that's how we ended up meeting. And then Diana called me and said, I want you to come meet these Hollywood writers. And I'm like, Diana, it would take an act of Congress to get me to go talk to another Hollywood writer after what happened to my family and us with the discovery thing. And this is in 2012, right? And so um, I'm like, Diana, I, I've got to pray for a sign. I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to meet these people unless I know the lady wants me to meet them. Because she said she just came. And in, 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 at Easter of 2012, and now we're talking de- October of 2012, she's trying to um, introduce me to these writers. And so I went out and, and I told them no to start with. And I, I walked out back. And I looked up at the heavens and I asked the lady, I said, if this be your will, if this is what you want me to do, I need to know. And all of a sudden. Uh, this was this went on Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday, and then Thursday night the tree caught fire. And I called Diana and I said, Diana, here's your, here's your. Um, I got the sign. I'll be in Wilmington in the morning. So I met these people and it went on to a seven eight year deal, and it'll be um, a really large deal I think. And I, I got to. Be careful! I can't say much because they don't want me to. Yeah, because it can mess it can mess up the the deal. You understand? What yeah, I'm yeah, I totally get it. Totally get it. And but yeah. but but what you're saying is everything is cool and and you're moving forward and we'll find out soon enough. And that's all we need. Let's let's take a break right here, Chris. Uh, our guest tonight, Chris Bledsoe. I've got lots of calls on hold. The number is 747-228-2051. Chris Bledsoe is with us taking your calls and answering all of your questions. This is Faded Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll pick it up when we come back after this short break. Stay with us. back fade to black i'm your host jimmy church on the game changer network and kgra the planet if you ever miss a live show of fade to black it's simple just go and get our podcast click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com it is just two dollars per month we've got over 1200 shows right there in the archives all the apps that you need everything is updated every single night and it's just two dollars per month our guest tonight is Chris Bledsoe, and we are taking your phone calls. If any, if you have any questions or comments for Chris, the number is 747-228-2051, 747-228-2051. And, uh, Chris, before we uh, get back to the calls, I wanted to ask you um, that when – when all of these references that come in, and I just got another email, by the way, uh, talking about this, these references that come in from others about uh, the Bible, the it, you know, of course, there's the show Ancient Aliens. Is that what the the ancient civilizations were seeing and communicating with, and they didn't have another choice but to... Because they don't know what an, uh, an ancient or an ET civilization is from another planet or another star system, they can't relate it that way. They have to probably go to a god or something religious. And if those communications are happening, what are they going to go? The leaders of these villages, 
if they're going to go back and tell the people what, you know, they have to say it's God or angels. They can't say it's little gray dudes from Zeta Reticuli because the village wouldn't know what they were talking about, right? Well, yeah, and no, some of those they would call them messengers, uh, not just necessarily an angel, but a messenger. Um, it's all over the Bible. The, 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 there's a word. Um, if you pull up a Bible gateway or one of those uh, Bible hub search engines where you can plug a word in, put the word cloud in, and it'll show up 100 times or 99 times in the King James Bible. And we know this because Diana Pasolka discovered it. Her and our friend Dr. Servas uh, discovered that when King James translated the Bible, he actually changed the meaning of that word from uh, if a Hebrew person, ancient Hebrew, would have said that word cloud, it wouldn't have meant a weather phenomenon. It would have meant an object in the sky right, or a throne right, right. or an angel, right? Right. So they didn't know what we were dealing with, and we still don't. But what I can tell you, based on uh, all these years and how it interacts with me and my family, it, 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 it's based on, just like uh, Graham said earlier, um, he was down and out on his luck, and it came. So, you know, I've got a thousand people that's told me that which backs up exactly what happened to me. So I lean real hard into believing whatever they are, whoever they are, they listen to your thoughts, they hear your prayers, they hear what you're thinking, they know what you're going to do before you do it. They can build your life up or they can tear it down. They can do either or. So I, I think it's we have to shine some very bright light out of our hearts and align ourselves with these good entities because there's dark ones too let's where go, there's light there's dark let's go back to the phones hi you're live on fade to black who's calling hey jimmy it's paul from cloudy grants pass it's hey. real cloud yeah right on um, paul what have you got for uh what do you got for chris tonight i've been an investigator and a case presenter for 30 years i can usually tell when somebody's yanking my phone and you are absolutely sincere in what you um, what you are presenting leave that uh, from the bottom of it, just so you know uh, listen to you of course listen to you okay you're it's cutting uh, Paul you're cutting in and out uh, get straight to your question okay question why you why you is it geology is it geography um, why 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 were you chosen? And then, just as an aside, tell them to send some of the good ones my way. I'd love to meet them. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Paul. Thank you for the question. Why you? That's a great question. Why you, Chris? You know, I've, I've asked that a thousand times, and I don't like to feel like I'm anything special at all because I'm not. I'm no different just than anyone different. Um I asked that to George Zervas. Why is this happening, George? Why? He's he's uh, he's a very good uh, friend of mine, and he looked at me real hard one day, and he said, "Why not you? Somebody's got to take this word um, to the public, and I think you're well suited for it." And that's all he would tell me. So I, I don't know why. I, I can't answer that, but I know it is. I know it is, and a lot of people knows it is, just like Dr. McGuire. You heard what uh, he saw and his wife experienced, and other people's the same way. I mean, he's not the first one. Dr. Alexander, John, he called me today um, from Las Vegas. Shit, it looked like a ghost town there. But he experienced it with me, and I was able to tell him ahead of time that it was coming because of... Uh, the 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 radiation that it puts off it's like euphoria adrenaline or um i don't know how best to say it but it is it's it's very real so it's there's so many people see this and i have videos and 
like the video I shared with you, I haven't released that to the public yet, but sometime or another we're going to. And there's no not seeing that. When you see it, you see it. You can't unsee it. Right, right. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live. I'm Fade to Black. Who's calling? You're live. Three, two. I hate to, man, I hate to do this, Chris, but I three, two, one. Call back. Okay, let's go to, <laughs> I hate to do that. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hello. Yes. You're live. Oh, man. Hello, I just did it. Okay, you're live. Hello. You're live. Turn me oh, down okay. in the background. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, let's start now. I, I forgot about the uh, delay. Okay. Turn me down in the background, or we're going to have to. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. What have you got for, what's your name? Curtis. Another Curtis. Two Curtises in one night. Curtis, what do you have for Chris? Uh, what I was about to say is uh, the goddamn food shortage. Okay, but no foul language on this show. You're going to get bleeped. Okay. Yes, sir. So Sorry. what's your what's your question, Curtis? All right. When it comes to this point, I'd like to say uh, Psalms eighty three eighteen. And uh, anyone who has a different Bible, you know, it's up to them. Okay. All right. I, I have no and and thank you for the phone call, Curtis. Uh, Psalms eighty three eighteen. Do you know what that is uh, off the top of your head, Chris? I don't, but I can look it up real quick. Yeah, don't, well, look it up, and we'll get back to it later. And uh, okay. before we go back to the calls, uh, I have uh, I want to I, I go to an email. I've got a, a bunch of emails that have come in. This one is uh, from Sally. Sally says many different tuned in spiritual sources are speaking of their becoming two alternate consensus earth realities, one that moves into a higher states of being peace, etc., and one that continues on the path of strife and separation. Has he ever received any information regarding that? Yes. In a, in, a, in a manner of speaking, yes. Um, I don't know about two different realities but uh, as far as worlds, but there's going to be an awakening. And um, that awakening, the Bible calls it the apocalypse. If, if I say that word, everybody freaks out. It means the end of the world. Well, it doesn't. It means to reveal a secret that's been hidden, to tell a truth that uh, is unknown. So. The truth is coming, and um, it's coming to those that listen. And the UFO thing, this, 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 what's happening is going to become um, and real. And when it becomes real to like Bob, when it happened to Bob, now it's, it's it happens to him all the time, and he'll see it the rest of his life because it is attached to him now. So maybe, just maybe, we awaken. Um, we could probably awaken as a mass uh, planet to a new world and never suffer anymore. It's possible. But we got to get rid of the darkness. Got to get rid of the, the strife and the wars and all that before that can happen. Let's go but back. Awaken. Yeah, let's go back to the phones. I've got so many. The email is uh, just coming in uh, nonstop here. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, my name is Ian. Hi, Ian. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I want to tell you a story of an experience I had earlier this morning. Uh, I live in Pennsylvania, and I actually work for a supply chain warehousing for uh, hospital supplies. So I was getting up early in the morning, as I do. I start work at 6 a.m., walking out to my car. It's between 5.55, 5.57 a.m. And I look up at the sky, look at the stars, and walk into my car. 
and I see a line of stars. I'm like, huh, I've never seen that before. It was really big, like eight to ten of them, whatever. So I go to my phone to quickly grab uh, the Sky Guide app and see what it was. As I'm grabbing my phone, I realize those aren't stars. Those are orbs of some kind, and they're moving across the sky. I'm looking at them, and I can't believe how many there are. There must be 15 to 20 of them. Now I'm looking northeast, and I see them, and they're moving, and they're consolidating uh, farther along the curvature. I looked at them as long as I could, but I had to get straight to work and uh, did a little research. Apparently some people in Texas saw it as well. So whatever it was, it was big and far away. Uh, do you think it was uh, Elon Musk and his uh, his his uh, what's he, what's he calling that thing, uh, Chris? Uh, uh, his uh, uh, Starlink. Do you think it was the Starlink system, Ian? Do you think it could have been? Could have been. Could have been. Could have been. I've, I, really I've seen. Cool a, yeah, no, I, 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 I've seen a lot of pictures of Starlink uh, that are going around lately, and I, and I kind of felt that you know when you're setting up you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these satellites in a row, uh, you know to link up. I think the number is going to be ultimately sixteen thousand, and I think he's just asked for more uh, that people are going to see this up in the sky, and especially with. Uh, uh, not only naked eye, but night vision and, and think it's, you know, something really crazy. I'm not saying that's what you saw, but the way that you've described it to me, it could be. And that's all that I'm saying. Uh, but uh, pu- putting this over to uh, Chris really quick. Chris, uh, have you ever seen a string of orbs? Five, six, seven, oh, eight, yeah. nine, ten. Yes. You so have. Often. Really? Often, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go, Ian. You see, it, Chris just put me in my place right there. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay, all right. And it didn't pop up on your app, and that that is pretty interesting. They were there for him to see. They yeah. wanted you to see it. So just now start watching your dreams. When you see these lights, when you see these orbs, pay attention to your dreams. Ian, thank you for the phone call, my friend. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, that's uh, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, I haven't Sometimes, seen I haven't seen anything like that, but you have. Well, I was going to say um, I have a friend named Vincent Jenna. He, you may know Vincent. He's a, he's a medium, but he lives in Raleigh. And I met him at George Norrie's event in, in Asheville a couple of years ago. But uh, he came uh, back this past summer and uh, Ryan and Emily and I walked out to the pond with him. And as soon as we did, there was, this guy came alive. Seven or eight orbs just appeared and started flying. Um, just kept coming. So, yes, yeah, not uncommon at all to see a half a dozen of them together. Let's uh, go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Brian from Connecticut. Hi, Brian from Connecticut. Say hi to Chris. Chris, nice to meet you. Same here, Brian. What have you got, Brian? Um, I have a question for Chris. Is it possible that he can um, disclose some of the future events that were told to him years back. I had heard one about the earthquake in California uh, that occurred. That was one of the things that he was told um, by uh, his experiences um, with these beings or entities he's been in contact with. Is he able to give any any uh, vision on the future? Chris? Well, if I was to say it was the future, I wouldn't, uh, I really couldn't confirm that. What, what I can tell you is when, um, when I was missing for four and a half hours, I felt like I was in a movie theater, literally in a, inside of something round and I could see through the walls on it or just see these, it was like the screen everybody talks about and I saw wars and I saw starvation really bad. I saw my own children starving, and that just messed me up for the longest time. So I never talk about the negative stuff, only 
the positive. But I think that we're, um, we'll have to see that this book of Revelations, if there are people really using it as a script, if they are, there'll be more to come. Thank you for the phone call, Brian, and be safe out there, my friend. Brian, are you there? Oh, I guess Brian is gone. Oh, actually, I had him on mute. My bad, Brian. I'm oh. <laughs> so sorry about that. All right, let's uh, go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jim, it's Ron from Chicago. Good hey. evening. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Ron. Uh, what have you got for Chris tonight? Well, the first thing I want to say is... Um, you know, I, I, I was listening to your program. I was at work, and I was in my office, and I uh, finally, at the end of my shift, I got in my car, and I went to dash home to, to give you a call, and I c couldn't believe that I was the only car on the Kennedy Expressway to get home, and finally I got in touch with you, and I just want to say to Chris how much of a pleasure it is, sir, to have an opportunity to talk to you on Jim's uh, program because I strongly – am committed and believe in every word and every single detail you say about your extraordinary experience because it happened to me myself. And and I will want to emphasize to you, first, yes, in Chicago in the year 2012, I did see a UFO, which I called Jim and talked about <clears throat> what I'd seen. And actually, I was told that if I talked about it, that I could possibly lose my career and lose my job, which I work for the government. But I finally talked to Jim and told him my experience. But here's what I want to emphasize to you. You mentioned about a lady. <clears throat> and I do want to emphasize a month after I saw a UFO, I did see an orb. But what I saw was a hologram in midair. And then I looked at it and it was a picture of a woman. And she looked I know this sounds ludicrous. I know it sounds completely crazy, but I don't drink. I don't smoke. And I do take drug testing every three months. But what I wanted to ask you with the lady, do you think that it is a mind? In other words, does she, is it, how does she react to you physically and mentally? Do you, do you call for her or does she periodically come to you? And in your experience, do you feel comfortable with her or are you insecure or do you feel afraid of her because my experience is when I seen her she seen me did I communicate with her in language no but we were staring at each other and then all of a sudden there was a flash and then there was an orb and then the orb was moving away and I, I was wondering in your presence, when you see her, what is your feeling and how your how is your emotions inside you as far as seeing something? Because quite frankly, it's a possibility that you might, and I, I really mean to say this, that you might be a saint and seeing something that's possibly religious and, and nothing from a UFO. I'm just somewhat trying to get your opinion by that. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Ron. So many people, Chris, want to know about the lady. And uh, so uh, let me look at the clock. Okay, we got enough time here. Uh, let's go to the first part. Uh, are, you, are you calm? Are you at ease when you are in presence of the lady? Uh, well, I wouldn't say I'm calm. I'm mighty excited. Um, but not scared, not afraid, just in total shock um, and awe to see something like that, um, to experience. That changed my whole UFO world from five years of darkness to the light came in the door. And um, no, I'm not afraid at all and i'm i'm not nervous I, well i might be nervous because i'm in front of something this is powerful is she an angel i don't know he mentioned uh, uh, yeah he mentioned uh, uh, he looked into her eyes did you guys make eye to eye contact yes really yeah, she was six six feet away from me right full uh full in our existence i mean she came from out of a portal but she looked as real as 
uh, anybody else except that she was floating and six feet away and she had bright blue eyes with golden blonde hair and a dress that sparkled like you were seeing the stars in the sky. And it's just, I, I can't explain. I cried, Jimmy. I cried for six years, five years. Right, right. Every, every time I tried to tell this story, I'd start crying. I can't explain why. It just it did something to me that uh, words can't s- explain. I know I know a truth now. I know I right. know a reality that is crying out to help us and to help us get through these troubling times. They're here for us. They're watching over us. I, I, I know that. the feeling. You know what? I'm I'm going to make you laugh right now. I cried the first time I saw Eddie Van Halen on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have too because I loved Eddie Van Halen. Oh, man. I'll never forget that. I'm with a couple of friends, and I turn, and I had tears. I had a lump in my throat. You know, everybody's yelling and screaming. I was like, man, I can't even talk right now. So At least I'm coming clean. Ron, thank you for the phone call, my friend. I hope that answers your questions, and I want you to be safe out there in Chi-Town. I was born in Chicago, and I love taking those phone calls uh, from Chicago. Before we get there, um, uh, I'm going to get to this question really quick that uh, had came in. Uh, I've got a whole list of questions I need to get to, and it's this. Uh, is it true? That uh, this is from, hold on, uh, this is from the Kexberg Kid. Is it true that Jim Semivan told your family there is a higher order of beings out there? Is that true, Chris? Um, no, I wouldn't say that is true, um, but I've heard that before. But I don't remember Jim telling me that. Jim is just as curious about what's going on as you and I are. Okay. All I know, right. You know, I know his experience. I can't tell it. You know, that's one thing that he's going to let somebody else tell. Um, you know, that's, that's, he told me recently, he said, just leave my story out. A and E's going to take care of that. So I think <laughs> <laughs> leave my story out. And he's going to take care of it. All right. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to get Semi Van on this show. I've got, man, I've got about 500 million questions I need to ask Semi Van. And with that, let's take our break right here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Chris Bledsoe. We're taking your phone calls, answering all of your questions. I've got a bunch of stuff that's come in via email. I've got tons of stuff via Twitter. I've got calls on hold. We'll get to everything after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Chris Bledsoe is our guest. Open lines tonight with Chris. 747 228 2051. 747 228 2051. We're taking your calls, we're answering your questions. I have a whole pile of stuff that has been emailed in and uh, certainly coming in via Twitter too, as well. And we'll get to all of those. Chris, you ready to go back to the phones? Sure. All right, let's do this. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Turn me down in the background. Oh, well, I just lost that. See, you got to be ready when you call in 747-228-2051. And uh, before we, okay, all right. I think this caller is now ready. Let's see if we can do this. Do you have me turned down? You got to turn me down in the background. Okay, that's it. That's it. That call is uh, not going to be. Let's uh, Let's go over to here. Question from Huskers. Why does the phenomena care about contact with us? Is it altruistic? It's because they, it, it reminds me, um, well, they made us. I'm sure of it. I'm pretty sure that they're the guardians, the keepers of this 
this this terrarium that we live on called Earth. I think that they completely take care of us, look over us, and maybe more like they take care of evolution. They, but uh, I don't know. It's just it's about the best thing I can come up with there. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Mirella. Hi, Mirella. How Hello? are you? Oh, good. There's a delay. I'm not sure. Hello, Chris. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Morella. And are you, are you, oh, are you fantastic. Call, you're calling from Australia. I am, I am. Right on. What's your question for Chris? Um, I, I, it's taken me a really long time to put my story together. And, um, uh, and I couldn't talk about any of it for I'm um, 59 this month. I was 59 on the 6th of March. And I just finished a little set of paintings that I did my first sighting when I was a little girl and a second sighting that I had in of an orb in Germany and a last sighting that I had where I'm living now in Sydney. But my question is, is that important? How important, Chris, is it to be out, uh, talkative about it? I find it very, I'm very camera shy. And I, uh, Jimmy, to tell the truth, I've called, but I've hung up like last year. <laughs> For two years, I've been wanting to call in and just say that I'm still here. I'm still listening, loving you, loving everyone and the guests not listening to some people that I was listening to like years ago in about 2012. But, yeah, my question is how important is it to bring a message across? Is it enough that I do what I do? And they're very happy with me because I have a lot of... um, lights in the sky that I look at and some are reoccurring in the same place and others are random but I don't ever um, disclose, not even to my family except my daughters and um, now they're very curious and I understand more and more people are so curious but you're the, Chris, you're the very first person that that has really explained it on a timeline where you've had troubles and this and that and almost to the point of silence, you know, being silenced by the um, phenomena. But they're not silencing me. I get very excited. I feel excited. I was a Christian. I can speak in tongues. And when I do speak in the tongue of angels, I say it's the same thing. Um, I have a daughter that's a Christian, goes to church in LA, and I've got a daughter here that goes and studies the Quran and is a Muslim girl, so she married a Muslim. But So the two girls have similar talking. We talk the same. Like with my ETs, they talk to me. They do things. I talk. I speak. I pray to them. All the things that you're talking about. But how important is it to be disclosing? Yeah, and and Morello, let me jump in. Chris, she brings up a great point. How important is it to speak about your experiences uh, as opposed to keeping them to yourself? Well, it's very important, Um, especially... Now is it's a lot easier now than it was 12 years ago. I can tell you, I got hit with a ball bat. You might say is immediately when I went to tell the story, I thought the world would want to know, and then bam, ridicule, uh, and so on. But now it's a lot easier, and I think you should tell your story. You should share. Everybody should share because that's what the world needs. The world needs to know this thing is real. Because it will move us into a whole different realm, an awakening into a new world, a new world order to where it's, uh, yeah. it, it'll be peaceful. 
Morella, thank you for the phone call. Be safe out there in Australia and and always remember, just talk about it. Thank you so much, Morella, and go back, Lee Tepe. And uh, before we go back uh, to the phone calls, I've got uh, so many different uh, questions that have been sent in, and there's a ton of them, I might add. Uh, first up is, this is from Dallas. Dallas wants to know if you see everything like an Ezekiel type of experience. Um, well, I'd have to know more about what he's describing there. Ezekiel was seeing a wheel within a wheel, a mechanical um, craft, and yes, I have seen that. Um, um, I don't know the best way to answer that or address that question, but well, there's yeah, you know what, and you're right about that because there's so many different elements to the Ezekiel story. And one of right. those, which I think is fundamental, the basis, the basis of uh, Ezekiel was that he was dreaming, right? Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was. I, I believe I'm not a biblical scholar, far from it, but I believe he was like underneath a tree and was dreaming and had a vision of all of this. And I've often wondered, uh, was it described as a dream? Because the experience was real, but it didn't want he didn't want it portrayed that way, right? And so he said he right. was just dreaming, uh, and I think that may be part of it. Um, I'm not sure, but the wheel within a wheel, I definitely have always felt like it was mechanical, right? That this wasn't a bird, this wasn't some natural phenomenon. You said clouds earlier, right? Um, I don't think it was any of that. I think what he saw was. Uh, something mechanical, and it didn't make sense to see something like that in the sky, right? So there must have been something, uh, what, what's the word, physical. I think it was a physical experience. Well, that's the whole problem with this whole thing with people's faith. You know, I, I'm not selling religion. Um, that's not my intention. I was raised in the church, and I still have those grounded. But... Um, my dog, he's wanting to go out. Yeah, what kind of dog? A uh, sheep dog, uh, a, a, a Scottish uh, border collie. A big one? Yeah, he says about 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Loves to catch frisbee. That's what yeah, I'm talking he, about. He, he's locked in my room in here with me. But, um, What's uh, his name? Good. What's his name? Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Chris is on the radio. <laughs> let's uh, let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, this is Tiffany Mack. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Jimmy. How are How you? How are you? I'm doing good. good. What have you got for Chris? Good. Well, you know, Chris and I are, are buddies, aren't we, Chris? Where we get yeah. really good buddies. Yeah. <laughs> so you all were talking sort of this religion aspect, but um, my daughter is in a Catholic school, and from the age of about two years old, she decided to talk about these things in her room that were what I would consider, you know, Jimmy and I were sort of like these paranormal dudes. We, we like to talk about orbs. Well, what I would consider orbs, and as a two-year-old, she decided to talk to the, these things, and she called them the little things. And she would uh, fly. She would say that they would fly around the room and they would land on her. And at two years old, she was very articulate. And I said, "Well, what are they doing?" And she said, "Well, you see these things on my wrist, Mom." And I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "Those are veins." And I said, "Veins, okay." And she goes, "I said, what do they do?" And she said, "They go inside and they check my blood." And I'm like, oh, my God, okay, so they check your blood, and, and what do they do? I said, do, do they do that to, what do they do? She said, they check my blood to see if I'm okay. I'm like, okay, do they do that to mommy? And she said, no, mommy, uh, don't be silly. They have yours already. So what do you think about this generational issue? Do you feel that maybe they have they're following generations. They're following the mommies and the daddies and the babies 
Do you feel like that's happening? Yeah, I think so. I think that they're just watching us over, tending to us, and they have certain people that they... They, uh, I think that they whisper in a lot of ears and many don't hear it, but some of us do. And um, without saying too much, um, I don't know why they pick certain people and they don't, other than it's physical. I've heard there's a physical difference in the brain, but uh, it's not going to hurt you. It hasn't hurt anybody Unless you're calling in, channeling in some dark magic or something, it's not the way it works. When I was seeing clouds, the Jimmy, earlier, the, the clouds in the sky, it's all over the Bible where Jesus says, "When I come back, when I return to earth, I'm coming in or I'm coming on a cloud from heaven." So felt- it's in, it's in there, it's in the Bible, it's mixed into it, and the conundrum is the is the technology. People can't see technology and angels by no means. They just can't get it. It's got to be an alien or an ancient alien. But I got Uh, sidetracked, Tiffany. I'm sorry. Yeah, Tiffany said, is it the brain or the blood? Brain. It's the brain. There you go, Tiffany. That's what I'm hearing. Tiffany, thank you for the phone call. Okay, go ahead. You got one more. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. What we were, you know, Christopher and and I, we, you know, we all know the story of um, like the ancient bloodline, right? We talk about um, maybe the RH negatives. Do you feel that maybe the RH negatives have an issue with this as well? I don't know if it does or not. I I just know that it follows through the mother's side from what I've been told through some of my Mm -hmm. contacts that it comes through the mom usually and um, Mm -hmm. and or about 85 percent Native American Cherokee is that especially Cherokee. If you have that. Yeah. And we have talked about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think we have the Native American as well. We have the Cherokee bloodline as well. Well, isn't that the RH negative component? Mm, Uh, Not necessarily. uh, It goes back to like the Basque, right? A certain region. But that's both both sides of my family have that. Yeah, I have no idea. I I don't even know what kind of blood I have. If I get in trouble, I got no answers for the hospital, man. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Tiffany, go for O H. Go for O negative. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, thank you for the phone call and go Beckley Tepe. Thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, okay, before I go back to the phones, I. I Chris, I'm just going to let you know, I have been backed up on what is happening here with uh, email and and Twitter. And I'm going to try to get all of these in. This question uh, comes in from, uh, I think it's Dwayne. Hey, can you ask Chris if the bull that knocked him over hurt him? Okay, there's like four questions. So let's do this one first. The bull that knocked you over, did you get hurt? No, nope, not one bit other than, you know, I fell backwards, fell on my back into the leaves, and that kind of winded me for a minute. But, no, I saw it go over me completely, the whole entire thing, but I could see through it. And I thought, you know, it was would have hurt me, but it did. It was he's, translucent. He's got a second question, and that was, and what feelings he had when the rib cage hairy sausage object was given to him and that was you know what i i still think about that when he uh when he told about uh uh the object that was given to you um did you have any feelings as you held this object well i was afraid of it it, it felt like uh, a little small dog with no leg or no head you know no no but it was alive it felt like a living thing so i didn't know what i had it was dark and it was prickly in my hands like it had real prickly fur. So I set it in a dog kennel. And the minute I did is when this portal opens up and out comes this cow, bull. And um, the next day, I don't even know if it was the next day. Because what happened when she came, it it got me so good. I didn't think about that object anymore. 
it was probably one or two days afterwards that I went out checking for where it was and it wasn't there anymore. It was gone. So I don't know what it was other than um, I've asked many questions and in my dreams, it came to me that it represented uh, all living people and uh, beings right now that we're without direction. We're at a point in life. We have no direction forward or backwards. We're just, uh, we're not doing what we should to this earth, this planet. We're abusing the world and we're just running to and fro without any direction. That's uh, Dwayne's got one last question. I think you kind of answered it, but I'll ask it anyway since he wrote it. Um, when you held the object, were you creeped out or was yes. it funny? No, I was creeped out bad. The whole thing was creepy, being out there in the woods and, you know, with these these entities, I'd seen them before more than one time and um, still do from time to time. It's not that often, but that had me creeped out bad to start with. And then when the, the bull and the, the lady came, that just changed, rocked my whole world. It changed everything. I can't tell you how much that changed my whole life. And it got the attention of a lot of people. This comes from uh, Tara. Tara wants to know, um, you have referred to these contacts as being angels. Are they specific to you, or are they here for the earth? Here for the earth. They're here for the world. I think they I honestly believe that they're the engine that creates everything. No, look at all the life that's been on this planet through the archaeological layers of dinosaurs and uh, all these different eight people, uh, Lucy, and millions and millions and millions of species. Well, none of that happened by natural selection. That didn't happen by Darwin. There's no way. You can't get a chicken from an, uh, an elephant or an elephant from a chicken. It just don't work that way. So something has created everything here, and I believe it be the angels. And uh, there's a good reason I believe that. For one is the triangle they wore on the chest, because that got some attention to people that was curious about that. And I was told that it was the uh, same markings were on some of the crashed relic stuff. Let's uh, go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Jeff, Bountiful, Utah. Hi, Jeff from Utah. What's, uh, How what's are you your, doing, Jimmy? I'm doing good. What's your question tonight? I just had a question uh, for Chris about dreams and then like a comment if I can kind of follow up about it. What do you, if anything, think dreams actually are? Chris? Oh, I've thought about that a lot. Um I honestly think that uh, maybe we live in, in simultaneous worlds, like several worlds at one time, and maybe we're bleeding over into that other um, dimension, like the movie, remember the one with Jackie Chan, or was it Jackie Chan, or Jet Li, and, um, or, I don't quite know, Um I know that they're, they're, they turn out real. Dreams are very important, especially if you see these lights. If you see the lights in the sky, watch for your dreams. How I did a lot of work on uh, over the years working with scientists and all would be to follow my dreams. That's where a lot of stuff comes from. A lot of patents come from dreams. It's given to us, the, the messages or the answers are given like tesla got a lot of his stuff out of dreams my friend uh, well i'm not going to use his name but one of my friends have 55 patents and they all come through these dreams do you remember your dreams yeah well quite a bit i do if i set out to yeah i do the same thing i do the same thing um man i'm limited on time here uh jeff you said you had a quick comment 
Yeah, just a quick comment, which is basically, you know, in my perspective is that possibly what we're live, experiencing right now is a dream and that when we fall asleep, all of it disappears yep. and then we enter into another dream, which is actually an, another reality of ours, another lifetime. Yes, but possibly. And, and, and Jeff, go back Lee Tepe, man. Thank you for the phone call. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Uh, that's a great phone call right there. I try to uh, remember my dreams uh, too as well. And I'm going to squeeze in one more phone call before the break. And then we'll come back, we'll do some overtime, and I'll get to all of the rest of everybody's uh, email and Twitter questions. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? You there, Jimmy? Yes, who's calling? Uh, it's the Bee's Nest. The Bee's Nest? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what they call me. Okay, what's your question for Chris? Hey, Chris, uh, can you give us any predictions for the future? Um, I'm not much on doing that. Um, although I have a lot of things I dream and, and I sometimes want to tell it, but, um, I've gotten, I, I uh, just, uh, uh, bees nest. Thank you for the phone call and go back. Lee Tappy, be safe out there. I, I'll say this, uh, really quick, Chris, I've got like eight emails. Uh, can we get another prophecy? Can we get another uh, prediction for the future? Is there anything else that the lady said about what's going on? Uh, did you have any visions about coronavirus? It, you know, it, it is, it, it's endless when it comes to that side of things. But that's not what you do, is it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not into that, even though I, I worry about it. I saw a lot of things, so... Uh, earthquakes in the center of the country that was so bad that it it, um, it, it all you know just things I saw they showed me these things they showed me wars and famines and plagues and uh, you know I immediately went to prepping for for years I started prepping like crazy I plowed up half my backyard and put in chickens and animals and all because of that uh, and then I finally realized it's not, it may not happen tomorrow. Everything they showed me was such a, uh, such a, uh, impact that I thought the world was going to come to an end to the next day. I didn't realize until I saw, a uh, 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 Edgar Casey thing and realize that he made prophecies that are, you know, hundreds of years old. Right. Right. Or yeah. what's the name? In the future. Yeah, Nostradamus. Right, Nostradamus. So uh, if you ever remember the Nostradamus files where they did uh, the History Channel had a show. Well, and they watched. would show him looking into a little bowl of water and then he would see tanks and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. That's what it was like when they took me for four and a half hours, which seemed like a lot longer. Uh, but I kept seeing these images, visions of of uh, weapons exploding over our land and weapons exploding overseas and um, just famine and, and war. And when they showed me that, they told me this does not have to happen, but we're on a trajectory for it to happen. Here's a quick question from Susan that you can answer before the break. We have about two and a half minutes. Susan wants to know your thoughts on reincarnation. Well, I'm like the last caller when he talks about dreams. Uh, I, I think that uh, by these orbs, remember, I was a, a, a deacon in the church. So I believed every word the Bible said. That's what I thought. Well, reincarnation is not in the Christian faith. But today it is for me. Um, I've got pictures of my dog after it died. I've got pictures of children and uh, all kinds of people in these balls of light that are all around us. And I have, you know, sometimes there'll be thousands of orbs that show up. They're like children in these things and there are people in them. So what does that mean? What did it mean when Jesus said, if you believe like me, you can do anything? You can make a mountain move if you just had the faith of a tiny little mustard seed. So what is he saying? He's saying that you're in an illusion. So I think maybe we live in, in an illusion, and it's more about the soul 
the, the journey of the soul. So we come back or we go through different places. I don't know, but I'm up for that. I'm speculating too here. There you go. Chris, let's take a break right here. We got to get this in. And when we come back, I'll get all of your email questions in. And and I'm going to try to get it all in. We might get a couple of more phone calls in too as well. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Chris Bledsoe, answering all of your questions. We'll be right back after this short break. It's Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our guest, Chris Bledsoe. Answering all of your questions. And now, Chris, I'm going to switch over to email. And uh, I've got a ton of questions. I'm going to try to get all of these in the uh, uh, and, and Twitter for everybody that didn't get a chance to call in on the phones. Next question is, has... Chris, Chris, are you ready? By the way, I forgot to say yeah, welcome yeah, back. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Chris, have you ever been exposed to any classified information, and are you obligated to any non-disclosure agreements? Um, I haven't signed anything. Never have. Wasn't never asked to, but, yeah, I've seen classified stuff. And, seen and, and, and been exposed to some, yeah. Yeah, like what? <laughs> uh, well, I just I can't say. Oh, it's Chris, classified. that's no fun. <laughs> that's no fun. That's why you're on the show. It's my job to get that kind of stuff out of you. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, everything's classified. Things in the government can be uh, even satellites or codes, and um, satellites are one of the most um, protected secret things out there so you've been exposed to satellite information see how well, i do it you see uh, how i do it you see that chris like what did you see well um uh, well you just twisted my arm aren't you <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe i've seen some cameras and different things that some of these things can do and uh it's amazing what they have out there and, and and are they are they looking at UFOs? Are they looking at aliens? Are they looking at you? What, what you know? What are they looking at? Well, they're looking at um, they're looking at everything. Um, every time we, uh, every time there's a, lo- a rocket launch, there is eyes on that rocket. I mean, ground based t- uh, binoculars or telescopes, and then after it gets out of that range comes a high-flying airplane. used to be called the WB-57, and uh, those are your NRO guys, National Reconnaissance Office. In fact, a friend of mine ran that program. But they um, there's another jet, F one hundred four Starfighter, that they put rockets on, and they'd go right on up into space following this thing. To see what might come, give it a peep or visit it. So I can just tell you, when those rockets go up, there are things always watching. Always. Yeah, the Space Force uh, launched their first rocket today. I wonder if uh, if that was monitored. And no information about what the payload was or what they were doing. But I, I found that very interesting. Okay, let's go back uh to uh i have this email here which is uh this is from kevin kevin says do you think your experience has been disclosure for you absolutely is disclosure for me and this whole family and everybody that's that's coming that that's come in touch uh or had an experience with us right I wouldn't say everybody, but there's a lot of people that have come here and have changed their lives. Disclosure, you know, I don't need the government to tell me it's real. In fact, they asked me. 
This uh, this is from Eric. I'm not sure what this means. The Supreme Creator sends out the Shining Ones. My guess is Chris is communicating with a Shining One. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what they told me they were when I first met them in 2007. When that incident happened, um, they were they told me they were called the Guardians. They had this triangle on their chest, and that they work for creation. And so I naturally assumed angels because of uh, they came in light. And when you get near that light, you find out there's a mechanical thing in there in that light. As long as it's bright, you can't see it. But, um, yeah. This comes in from Berserk uh, Scorpion. It says, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's long. Let me get to the end of it. Um I don't know the exact nature of the new knowledge that humanity will awaken to on the 23rd of September, 2026, but still, can you guess what it could be? Full disclosure, as full as we want to get it, Uh, but I think we're going to awaken to a time of peace and a new knowledge and of, of, uh, of living with these beings. I think they'll come in and be more interactive once we all accept who they are and don't hurt them and shoot at them. Can you, uh, if they want Chris to go out and tell the story, why are you reluctant to tell the negative sides of the story like negative parts of prophecies? Because um, I know how it affects people. And I've tried to tell this story for 13 years. And every time I bring up any of the negative parts, I see people's face just glass, their eyes glass over, and you lose them at that point. So I have completely stayed away from the negative, and I only want to tell the positive. And there's way more positive than negative. The only thing I have had to deal with negative is what first happened to me when I was taken, and I saw all these... Um, and during the first year or two years, they kept coming and I kept seeing these awful battles and wars and, um, you know, famine, starvation, the earth, you know, burning up, that kind of thing. But I didn't want to go down that route. I didn't want to tell that story. I didn't want to be the one to bring negative anything. So I've always stuck to the positive side, which is the healing side. And when you, I believe whatever you, you align yourself with is how things work out. You know, what is, and this is from Noel, 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 uh, what is your view on the afterlife? Well, I think when you die, you go, right. You don't go anywhere. I mean, you just go into a different realm where these orbs are and um maybe you stay there a while no i've i've followed these reincarnation um documentaries quite a bit and there's things where people die and then 70 years later they come back as something so they were undoubtedly somewhere for them 70 years right right till they come back as another child so maybe they're just trapped in an orb Maybe that's the real world. Maybe we're in a fake world, an illusion. And the real world is the eternal world where the human or the body or the soul or the spirit goes when you leave this body. This is definitely a temporary shell. Yeah, you need to, uh, one of these days, you need to sit down with the Dalai Lama. I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm, I'm being straight up, Chris. You need to sit down with the Dalai Lama. He's reincarnated, and I think you guys need to share some stories. I got time for one quick phone call. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? You're live. My name is Adam. Adam, what's your question for Chris? My question for Chris is, 
what's going on with this coronavirus? You know, I live over here in Detroit, Michigan. My backyard is the Metro Airport. Okay, what's going on with the coronavirus? Well, that's the question. Chris, what's going on with the coronavirus? Well, um, uh, it's pretty scary, right? But from what I'm seeing as far as death tolls and and infection rates, it's not as bad as some of the other stuff we've seen. Like uh, H1N1 had 60 million cases in America and thirteen or 14,000 died in one year. We got 300,000 in the whole world. And they're like, the world's coming to an end. So I think... I think you'll be okay. Just stay at home and do what you're supposed to, and um, it, this too will pass. It'll go away, and and the light will come back. We'll be out of this in another couple of months, I think. There you go, Adam. Thank you for the phone call. Be safe out there in Detroit, and go Beckley Tappy. Uh, let's uh, – man, I've got uh, one other uh, – I've got a couple of emails that have just come in. And one of them is this. Uh, This is from Emily. She wants to know if you followed anything uh, of the remote viewing projects from the Farsight Institute. I'm not the Farsight. Uh, If it was, if I was involved in that, I didn't know it. But, uh, yeah, the remote viewing, I've done some of that. I've actually studied with John Alexander on some of that. Um, but I don't know about the Farsight Institute. I'm not familiar with that. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Uh, the number one question tonight that has come in uh, over and over again, so I'm just going to ask a general version of it. What and when is all of this coming? Well, I think, um, I think, that we're about to unload some some uh, evidence here before too long, which if it gets through the right channels, it'll be um, it'll be it'll be a different story then because it's there and people have to address it. I think this year, 2020 is um, is going to show up to be something. Let me say this. I, I called my friend Jim and Bob and different ones within uh, friends of mine. And I told them that Easter, when this thing came at Easter last year or 2019, it told me it's now chapter two. It's time, time to start talking. Tell your story. It said that it's going to be a revealing of sorts. So I told that to these government people. There is going to be a revealing, so we should keep an eye on this guy. Uh, You're going to see a lot more reports, and that's what's happening now. It's coming in. uh, All the ships in the the Navy, I hear, are seeing these things. We're getting reports every day. So this year is going to be a big year, but it's not going to come over all at once. It'll be a five-year, six-year thing of uh, spoon-feeding this information to the public. Well, why not now, though, Chris? I mean, well, even though it seems to be happening a little bit, like you said, you know, spoon-feeding, but why not just just go for it? Why not now? Well, there's so many sides to this thing. you got people that want to see, they want this to be aliens with ray guns and a S-32B cruiser coming from some planet somewhere, and they, they make that's what they want. They don't want my story to come out, right? So there's so much conflict there. Um, It's just got to come out the right way, Jimmy. And, you know, it's very important to, to do it the right way. That's what the lady told me. She said, you have to tell your story. The truth has to be told. There's going to be deception out there, uh, but you know the truth, and you should tell what you know. And so that's what I started doing, and 
A lot of people don't like it. I've had my wife threaten, my children threaten to our face here at our house, saying, if you release this information, we'll take care of your family. You know, they don't want me to tell this. Why? Why don't they bother other UFO people? They're out talking every weekend. They never get threats and that kind of thing. But the minute I start sharing this, we start getting death threats, you see. So there's a push for this side not to come out, and there's a push for the other side. So you got a, you got a, a problem there of what information gets to come public. Is this, is this, Chris, is this a new consciousness, you know, being born and formed? I think so. I think it is. Um, yeah. I think the the whole the whole story is going to come out in its own time and in its in the right way. No matter how bad we want to to get this disclosure out, it's going to come out the correct way, and I know that. And they're going to see to it. But see what's funny, Jimmy, is when Bob called me. Bob said, "I want to come see you and bring some equipment and try to film this stuff." What I didn't tell him was at Easter. Just a few months before, when this entity came, it said, we're going to help you with a camera and with photos and video and with witnesses to tell this to the world. That's what it told me as I was filming it, right? Right. And so here comes Bob, uh, three, four months later, calls me. I want to come bring cameras and film this stuff at your house. So what would be the odds of that? Because all I have is a cell phone, right? And and after I was told that, here comes Dr. McGuire, and he's got all the best equipment. And then I walk outside three nights in a row over New Year's, and I looked up at the sky and I said, if it be thy will, I need to know. And I address it to the lady, to the lady. If it be your will, show me. Am I doing the right thing by inviting Bob here? And immediately the sky lit up, did it three nights in a row. And so I knew then it was it was uh, going to be a special meeting. And when Bob come, I walked out with him and asked the same thing again. And immediately it started appearing in front of him. So I think it's going to be interesting. Come soon. Don't you find get- it yeah, when we hear so many uh, stories and experiences uh, when it comes to interaction with intelligent uh, off-planet species that we're not ready when the planet is ready. When you guys have a shift in consciousness, when you guys fix your stuff and 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 you've got things, you've got issues there. But when you get that, and and, and we hear it over and over again, right now with what is going down with the economy and this worldwide international crisis that we're dealing with and uh, coronavirus, that everybody on this planet right now has had a real shift and and questioning values and the thing, and everybody is suddenly nice on the planet, right? <laughs> Crime rates are down. We're not talking about wars anymore. That we've had this shift. Is this part of it? Is this part of uh, the end game here? And is this what everybody has been talking about for for decades now? 100% yes. All of it. it. It's changed everybody, and it's not going away. This virus can be gone next week, and it's not going to leave our minds. So we've all shifted, changed. And uh, I think you're right, Jimmy. I think this year, maybe Easter or right after, I get some more excellent video. We'll see. But there's a good chance I get something that um, it's just going to be hard to say. It's not there. I need to, I need, I need to come out to the Bledsoe pad. That's what I need. I, I, need to, I need to come out and hang out with Chris and Chris Jr., um, you you brought up Easter uh, so many times tonight, which is is it's coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, do you do you really anticipate something happening for you? I mean, look, by making this kind of announcement on a show like this, what happens if you wake up Easter Sunday? You look out your you know your front porch, and you've got five hundred people out there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen with, with not quite 500, but. You know uh, what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, what 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 are you going to do about that? I mean, people pitch in tents. <laughs> well, maybe it would be meant to be, right? Part of that disclosure thing. Um, I just know every year at Easter, every year at Easter, is since the lady came in 2012 on Easter, every year something major has showed up. And I mean, really, um, Easter of last year. Um, uh, 2019 this entity came but the year before my wife's oldest sister was always my worst nightmare she was skeptical she cut me off you know you don't bring it up around the family i don't believe it i don't believe it i don't believe it that's what she would say you know my, my sister-in-law well 2018 we go up to dairy queen on Easter Sunday at night with her husband and my wife. And when we come back to the house, it was only a mile away. My, um, we were riding in their truck. I was in the front seat with her husband and my wife and her sister in the back. When we drove in the yard, I said, they're here. And I never talk about this in front of these people because they shut me down. I said, they're here. They looked at me and said, why? I said, well, let's walk out, to open the truck. When we got out of the truck, it was hovering 150 feet above us, straight above our truck. And it was the size of an ice cream truck. And it was just sitting there, golden orange orb, big as a small truck, box truck. And then it drifted out to the mailbox about 100 yards away. And then the light went out. And there it sat. You could see a black, round, egg-shaped silhouette in the night sky and then it shot off with no light at all it shot off we all saw it well this person that was my worst skeptic your sister-in-law uh, yeah changed her whole life and her husband he looked at me and said how in the world did you know it was above the truck i said they're angels alan and um i can feel them and that's exactly what i you know i knew it Say, I showed that to John Alexander the same way. When they get very close, I can feel them, the energy they put out. There's nothing like the feeling of shutting down your sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I did in a big way. <laughs> you know? I didn't. I didn't. I just looked up to the sky, and I, I had the lady in my thoughts, and I said, thank you for that. That was the best Easter present right I could ever have. Yeah, you know, and, 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 I, I, can I say this? I'm going to blow your mind. You know what we don't have out here in Southern California? You're going to trip. Dairy Queen. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. man, I miss Dairy Queen so much. It was, I, I, I just miss it. We don't have Dairy Queen in Southern California. We don't have a lot of stuff in Southern California. You know what we don't have in Southern California? You can't find it anywhere. You're going to, you're going to die. It doesn't even make sense to the rest of the country. We don't have biscuits and gravy. Wow. Right. Or grits. Yeah, no, grits. no grits. There ain't no grits in California. <laughs> but there's no biscuits and gravy in Southern California. Can, uh, can, I mean, does that even make sense to you? No, it don't. You need to talk, got, you need to, talk to the lady. <laughs> she needs to get us straightened out. We need biscuits and gravy and Dairy Queen, and I'd be happy. Every time I go out, they give me a, a, a piece of toast with avocado spread on it. You know, I'm used to grits and eggs, right? Right, right. <laughs> so I, got, I got broke in. <laughs> oh, man. A couple of weeks ago, Rita and I, before we, uh, before we say goodnight, Chris, and thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for opening up and, and answering all these uh, very difficult questions. But a couple of weeks ago, Rita and I went to Las Vegas. And we went out to dinner with uh, Joshua P. Warren and the crew, you know, and so we go out to dinner. Laura Cantu it was great. And I could have I could have had lobster. I could have had steak. I could have filet. I got whatever I wanted on this menu. You know what I got? Biscuits and gravy. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm looking at Joshua's eating uh, crab legs, right? Yeah. Everybody is just chowing down. I got biscuits and gravy with a side of scrambled eggs, man, and I was never more happy. 
Listen, Chris, thank you so much, man, for taking the time, uh, the questions. And this is what you got to enjoy tonight. When I do the show like this for two and a half, three hours, and I go to open lines or I do an Ask Me Anything, and you get these varied questions back to back to back to back to back. It's exhausting. You you have to think and 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 get it out. It's not on one wavelength or one subject. It jumps all over the place, and it takes a lot of energy. And and you went through it tonight, went pole to pole. Thank you so much. And I want you to be safe out there. Take care of the family. You are important to us. Take care of yourself and be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy. And you would surely have to come out this way sometime this year. Hey, will I get biscuits and gravy and Dairy Queen? Absolutely. That's what I'm talking it's a, about. It's a mile from my house. <laughs> Chris Bledsoe. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Again, be safe. All right, Jim. Thank you. Right on. Chris Bledsoe. And now you can follow Chris over on Facebook. His links are right there at jimmychurchradio.com. You can click, go follow Chris on Facebook, and you can also reach out right there. And with that, this wraps an, another amazing another amazing week here on Fade to Black. Now, we're going to go through uh, more uh, crazy news over the weekend, and I want everybody to do what is right. Stay at home, kick back, relax. Watch Netflix, write that book that you've always wanted to write, spend some time with your family, cook some food, open up a, a, a cookbook, cook something you've never cooked before, hang out with the family, and do the right thing. This country, this world right now is going through a lot. We all are. We're all stressed, okay? But together, we will get through all of it. I am your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. I want to thank everybody that called in tonight, all of the email, all of the questions. It was an absolute amazing show. And, of course, thank you to Mr. Chris Bledsoe Sr. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast owned a copyright of 2020 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. Our meal is Jimmy Church. I want everybody to have a great, safe, and an amazing weekend. Until Monday, go Beckley Tepe.